Next, though, we turn to the world of product marketing and a new way advertisers are using science to ensure their ads are hitting all the right notes. If you think that looking directly into the brains of consumers sounds like the stuff of sci-fi, then think again. It sometimes seems like everywhere we go, we're being encouraged to buy cola, cars, cosmetics. No wonder some people say we've reached visual overload. But that causes a problem for any company that wants to sell you something. How to break through all this and make a real connection with potential customers. TV ads with effective combinations of pictures and sound can stay in our memories long after they've left our screens. But just because everyone remembers your ditty, it doesn't mean it's effective in making everyone want to buy your product. To do that, modern advertisers want to delve even deeper into the subconscious. Marketing Sciences is an agency that uses the most up-to-date neuroscience to help a company tailor its ads to the precise sensibilities of its target market. To them, it's all about tapping into feelings. When you choose a product or you buy a brand, you think you're doing this at a really rational level, but actually it's a very emotional, unconscious level and you're not aware of all of the processing that's going on in your brain. Neuroscience allows us to tap into this unconscious, emotional level and to be able to understand how it affects our conscious decision making. Yep, here we go. And here's some of the equipment they use. Feels like a cat. <laughs> Emotional reactions cause biological changes in the body, and they can be measured by this EEG helmet. Its sensors monitor the electrical activity in the brain, triggered when we respond positively or negatively to something. The GSR equipment measures skin conductivity and tells us how excited a person is. All kitted out, the next step is to show the subject the ad and find out which emotions are raised and when. In this demonstration, the commercial is for a well-known brand of coffee, with a well-known leading man. I'm sorry, do you mind if of I... Of course, uh... you know, I don't think I have a pen. Huh? Um, I just want an espresso. Yep. What else? As the volunteers watch, their precise responses are measured and fed back to the computer in a level of detail they could never describe themselves. When someone's watching an ad, they can't tell you what's happening on a sub-second by second basis. And they can't tell you what's happening at that unconscious emotional level. But the equipment can. It shows the team which parts of the ad provoke positive reactions and which bits fail to. Typically, 40 people would view each one and their results would be collated. The client can specify a particular group for testing. And the most striking result for this particular ad is that men and women have very different feelings towards it. Here, we've got the female response along the top, and now we've got the male responses along the bottom. And what we're seeing here is that women really engage with the ad. They engage with the narrative of the ad, so when the joke comes, they really get that. And crucially, towards the end, with the branding, we see a really positive emotional engagement, and that's what we want to see. However, when we look at the male response, what's happening is the way that the ad is set up and this particular way the joke is framed, looking at embarrassment, actually resonates negatively. This negative response transfers across to the branding. So men identify with the character's discomfort and that makes them dislike the brand. Based on these results, what advice would the team give the company to help their ad achieve maximum possible impact? So we would say, look again at the way the joke is phrased and the particular setup of the ad, and that might improve the result among that particular target. Mm -hmm.